Good morning everyone. 7 o'clock Thursday morning and as promised here's the first live feed on boundaries. My name's Adele Atten, I'm the principal at Your Healing Path and I am the creator of Dare to Be Authentic. Um, so I, I put, the, put the call out there last night that we were going to do a three-part series on boundaries and um, you know thinking about it overnight um, there's, there's a process, there is a process and when you follow this process boundaries don't have to be this big horrible scary thing right so the reason that boundaries are there why are they there they're put there either by ourselves or by people who care about us to protect us so what are we what are we protecting what are we protecting when we're talking about protection, okay, whether, whether, whether we're protecting ourselves or someone else is protecting us, it's usually there because of love. Doesn't always seem that way. Doesn't always seem that way, but it is. Because, you know, people care about us. I care about all of you guys. Um, and when boundaries are there, it's to, you know, put the brakes on a little bit so that you can scour the landscape and see what's out there rather than going, I'm on a hundred metre dash and I'm just going to get there. Okay. So when we're talking about boundaries and I've, I have my green juice this morning, I'm just going to take a sip. And Casper's on the windowsill. So, our own boundaries. What stops us from moving forward? Why have we put these boundaries on our abilities? Why have we put these boundaries on our potential for success? Um, ego. It's ego. We are trying to protect our ego. We are trying to protect ourselves from being hurt. Okay, very normal, natural human reaction. I've been hurt before doing that and I don't want to repeat that behavior. What we're actually saying when we do that is that someone hurt my soul and I won't let that happen again. Oh, I have goosebumps. <laughs> <coughs> so... You know, if you have your own self-imposed boundaries, if you have set up a series of limiting beliefs about your capabilities, you've done that because you've been hurt in the past. Okay? So where do you go from there? How do you then overcome that hurt? How do you, how do you move past that? Well, you don't do the 100 meter dash. You don't. Okay? You do the 100 metre dash, you, you, if you're not an elite athlete, and I'm so far from an elite athlete, you're going to hurt yourself, okay? You might pull a hammy, you might, you know, fall, twist your ankle, anything. So when you're starting out on, on, on testing, you know, where your boundaries are, where are your boundaries, you know? Do you even know that you've put boundaries on yourself? So, when we're looking at boundaries, we're looking at what do I want to achieve and why am I not achieving it, okay? Boundaries. Self-imposed boundaries, possibly imposed on you from others as well, um, but that's the video for, I think, tomorrow. I think tomorrow that's scheduled for. So let's talk about what actually happens when you start pushing your boundaries, okay? You get resistance. You, you kind of go, oh, I'm going to step forward, I'm going to push through this boundary, and you go, whoa, hang on a sec, whoa, that's not giving as, as well as I thought it would. Right. So, hi, B. Mwah. So... 
how do you start? How do you start simply on testing your boundaries? Try this little exercise. Hi, Kelly. Try this little exercise. If you are primarily um, left-handed, Grab a pen and start writing something with your right hand. If you're primarily right-handed, grab a pen and start writing something with your left hand. And, and, and rather than just sort of, you know, doing it, focus on what you're feeling at the time, okay? So you're trying to write your name all nice and smooth, whatever it might be. Hi, Victoria. You, um, but it's not quite coming out the way you thought. And why isn't it coming out the way you thought? I'm doing this all differently. <laughs> I'm doing this differently. Ah, I'm doing things differently. So if I'm doing things differently, it's not going to work out the way I've always done it. I'm writing with my left hand, but it doesn't look like it when I'm writing with my right hand. But if you're pushing boundaries, Darlings, my darlings, if you're ready to push boundaries, you're ready for a different outcome, okay? Because if you're not pushing boundaries and you're just continuing and doing the things that you've already done, I love the little messages coming through. Thanks, guys. Um, if you continue doing things the way you've always done them and you don't push the boundaries, you're always going to get the same results, okay? I'm going to give you a classic example. Um... And <laughs> something so simple, my green juice, right? My, uh, my, um, <laughs> my Nutribullet went to do Andre's juice this morning. Just felt like I'd burnt out the motor. Went, right, well, I'm going to have to work out something else. I'm going to have to try something else. Walked away from it. Really important part of the process. Walk away from it. If you've tested it and you go, well, hang on a sec, this is giving me something different. I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Step back. Step back and look at it. So if you step back and look at it and you go, okay, well, I can't do it that way. Can I do it this way? Start investigating your options. Right? When you do choose to really push yourself, that's when you start building confidence. When you start to push on those boundaries and make that advance of breaking through, right? Breaking through. And you have that little breakthrough and you're on the other side and you're going, wow, everything looks a bit different here. Everything looks just a wee bit different from this angle. But look at all the different options I've got. I'm going, I can look that way. Mine, I can look that way. Oh, look. Oh, all these different things. And you go, wow, that's, that's cool. I can do this. I can do this. I can see that life has different options out there for me because I've pushed my boundaries. I've decided to step out of my comfort zone and look at what other options are out there. Snap, guys. Snap. That's when you start building confidence. That's when you start building on a base of authentic confidence. Okay? You took a step and you didn't die. Amazing. And you know, what I realized yesterday is that a really, really important part of the process as well is having support when you're doing that. Here's why. When you step out, okay, your human brain, your heart, the person that you are needs that little bit of encouragement. They need your own little cheer squad. You're doing well, Adele. You're doing great. And if you don't feel that coming through, if you don't feel that what you're doing great because you're quite uncomfortable stepping out of your comfort zone. Oh, who, who would have thought that if you step out of your comfort zone, it becomes uncomfortable? <laughs> kind of makes sense, really. So 
if you start then going, oh, look, I've done this wonderful thing, and there's not someone there to kind of go, good on you. Good on you. I'm really proud of what you're doing. You're doing the right thing for you. You're doing what it takes to make your life the happiest life it can be. Mm-hmm. If you don't get that reinforcement, whether, look, you know what, whether it be from, whether it be from an outside source or whether you are good enough at this confidence thing to actually draw it from yourself, if you don't pat yourself on the back, if you don't sort of go, you know what, I rocked that, I did that really well, doubt may start to, to may, <laughs> doubt will creep in. It will creep in. And what that leads to is fear. Okay? So if we take that example that, that we started with, writing with your left hand and right hand or vice versa, when you start writing and it feels uncomfortable, okay, what's the next step from uncomfortable if it's still not happening the way you want it to happen? Is frustration. And then, then you get to frustration and it's still not working out the way you thought. And you get to anger. Well, why is this happening this way? And then you need to step back. Guys, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to step back from the situation that you find yourself in and look at it and apply the principles of dare, which we will go through. Look at it. Really look at it. Look at what's going on inside yourself, okay? Look at what's triggering you. What's triggering the, the discomfort? What's triggering the frustration? What's triggering the anger? You don't do that. You don't look at what's triggering that anger. You're going to shrink back. You are going to shrink back. And all the hard work that you've done becomes just another another band-aid on the wound really just becomes another band-aid on the wound and we're not here to put band-aids on wounds what we're here to do is let the wound heal yeah are you with me are you with me so how do we start that healing process okay we reach out we reach out to someone that can help you. So if you are doing whatever, you're in the garage or you're in the garden or you're in the kitchen and you get a dirty great gash on your hand, do you go to the mechanic? Do you go to the mechanic? <laughs> Thanks, Victoria. Do you go to the mechanic where there's, you know, grease and grime everywhere? Because that's okay. That's okay. That's what happens when you go to a mechanic there's there's dirt and there's grease and there's grime because they're working on the engine right or do you go to a doctor or a medical center or a pharmacy or do you go to your own little first aid kit and you get the disinfectant and you clean the wound and you look after it you keep it clean you nurture you nurture the healing process yeah And that's what I mean by reaching out. So it happened to me yesterday. Um, I mentioned that in the video that I put on my my personal page. It happened to me yesterday. And, and it wasn't a huge meltdown or anything, but there was definitely a bit of, of doubt that crept in. Look at me playing with my hair. It's not doing what it normally does this morning, and it's a little bit frustrating. See? Frustration. Frustration. Gosh, these examples just pull themselves out of the air, don't they? There are people out there that are willing to support you on your journey. There are people out there that are on their own path to authenticity or their own path to happiness or their own path to confidence or their own path to success and achieving. There are people out there that will understand what you're going through and will be willing to support you. And when that support comes through, oh, it's like, it's, it's a miracle. It's quite simply a miracle. 
you ask for the support. You, you know, you've already taken the steps and worked out, you know, what is it I'm feeling? Why am I feeling this way? Is it something I can deal with? Do I need to go to a doctor or do I need to go to a hospital? Or can I take care of it at home myself with my first aid kit? You know, different levels, different levels. I'm not here to tell you about every single different level. Casper just ran straight across. But just to acknowledge that there are different levels, okay? And this is the process that you will undergo when you start examining your boundaries, when you start to push through your boundaries, when you decide to take that first real step in getting what you want, in achieving what you want in this life. So, I've got to show you something, guys, right? Hang on. Right? I don't muck around about this sort of stuff. This is really, really important to me. So this morning, can you see my wall over there? Oh, well, there we are. There we are. I have notes all over my wall and all over the mirror up there. Because sometimes when I get passionate about something, I get a little bit sidetracked. So my notes are up there to keep me on track because I am serious about this and I am serious about helping other people overcome their boundaries, helping people break through their boundaries, okay? So when we make ourselves vulnerable, right, when we step out of our comfort zone and we experience all of those things and we open this raw wound that's been there for years and years and we've had the courage, we've had the courage to step out of that comfort zone and go, you know what, I want something better. I want something better. Your ego kicks in. So I'm referring back to my notes because there's some good stuff up there. Your ego kicks in and says, I have to protect myself. So you're either going to protect yourself by attacking or you're going to protect yourself by withdrawing. Okay. When you come from ego, that's what happens. When you come from soul, it's a whole different story, you know, because, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, that first initial reaction when you're stepping out of your comfort zone is that, you know, you're pushing your boundaries and your ego kicks in and you're trying to protect yourself. And what's really happening is you're trying to protect your soul. Yeah. That gorgeous, wonderful, incredible magnificence that you were born with. That was, that you thought was damaged along the way. Your soul wasn't damaged. The, the, the brilliant white light that you were born with, that hasn't been damaged. Your ego has. Your human form has. So what happens if we switch over to soul purpose and approach things from that way rather than approaching from ego? You reach out and people are there to support you and people are there to reassure you that you're doing okay. The right people. Because when we come from ego, we're coming from... <coughs> pardon me. When we come from ego, we're coming from you know, a, a place of, I don't want to say negative, but we're coming from a place of, of emotions that are not helpful, okay? When we come from soul, we're coming from love. See this freaking hair? See? It's, I need to come from my place of soul to come to terms with what my hair is doing this morning. This group is all about being able to share and come to the group with what you've been experiencing and allow yourself to heal in a safe space, okay? That's what I did yesterday when I had my little, um, you know, brain fart. That's what it was, it was a brain fart. I reached out to um, a group of people who are going through similar experiences to what I'm going through and quick as a wink, quick as a wink, I got the support I needed. I got uplifted by people who believe in what I'm doing. 
and I learned a really, really awesome, awesome lesson about investigating why you are experiencing what you're experiencing. And here's where dare comes into it. So dare is not just um, a dare. Dare is a system, okay? Define, assess, refine, and execute. When you're starting to push your boundaries, it's going to be uncomfortable, okay? So what do you do with that discomfort? You remove yourself. You remove the emotion from it as much as you possibly can. Hi, Shay. You remove your emotion from it as much as you possibly can. And you start looking at it from a different perspective. Yeah? Step back. Look at it differently. Define. What is it that I'm actually feeling? So it could be any one of those things that we talked about earlier. Assess. Why am I feeling this? Why am I feeling this? This one's a doozy, guys. This might take you a while to get the hang of it. The why am I feeling this yesterday was, I'm, I don't know, I'm not, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not reaching enough people. I'm, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. And all the while, I know full well I'm doing exactly the right thing for me. Yeah? And that's where we come into the next step, refine, which is exactly what I just said. I know that what I'm doing is exactly the right thing for me. And I know that the path that you choose to take, whether you're going towards happiness or success or wealth or joy or whatever, whatever, it's right for you. It's right for you right now. So get rid of the crap, okay? Get rid of that little bit of doubt that is stopping you from getting to where you want to get to. That's the refined part. Acknowledge it. Name it. Get rid of it. Don't need it. Don't need the shit of self-doubt. Don't need that. Get rid of it. So now what do I do? I've got that self-doubt. Gone. Okay? I go, yeah, this is all right. So what's really at play there? What's really at play? And this, you know, you delve deeper and deeper and deeper. Not too deep because you get caught in a spin. Go with the first answer that comes to you when you're starting this process. And you reach out. So it should be D-A-R-R-E. Refine, reach out. Once you know what you're going out there with, take that step. Take that step and reach out. Reach out to the people who you know will understand and who you can actually converse with on the same level. That's a really big part of it, okay? You're not, again, you're not going to go to the mechanic if you need a doctor. So don't reach out to a mechanic if you've cut yourself in the kitchen. Reach for your first aid kit or go to the doctor or go to a pharmacy and get what you need to start healing that wound. Yeah? And that's execute. Once you have defined it, assessed it, refined it, gotten rid of the crap, then execute. You know what you need to do. You know where you need to go to get an answer for whatever issue it is that you're going through at the time. And that is dare in motion. Oh, that's a good name, isn't it? That's dare in motion. So guys, I'm going to leave you with this thought. And it was the question that, that, someone asked you know that it's the question that got me out of my little my little um flip-flop yesterday if you saw someone going through what you're going through how would you react okay how would you react write this down so next time you're going through something and you've gone through define assess refine execute ask yourself what would I do for someone? What would I say to someone who is going through this? Because that's you then talking to your inner self, helping yourself get to your own answers. Yeah? And I guarantee you that once you do that, bang, the trigger for what you're feeling will make itself known. Mine was... 
a memory of my mum saying to me, but you always look so nice when you get dressed up. Why don't you do it more often? Wow. Wasn't that a light bulb moment for me? And that came once I asked myself that question. What would I, how would I try and encourage someone if they were going through this? How would I respond to them? And I wrote it down. This is how I would respond. If I saw someone behaving the way that I was behaving, I would say this, this, this about them, this, 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 this. And I would do this, 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 this. My initial response, looking back at myself, was the shadow of my mother's influence. Which is not a bad thing, okay? But it wasn't my influence, it wasn't my belief system. So guys, dare. Dare to push through your boundaries. Use that process. Start with something really small. You know, don't go, don't go blowing up the onion. I keep saying that. Do not go blowing up the onion. Start with something small. Something like change your routine in the morning and experience what that shift, what that change actually is doing to your body. What emotions is it pulling forward? Because these are the things you're going to have to deal with when you, want, when you really are ready to step through and push through a serious boundary in your life. Start with something small. Change your routine in the morning. See what that does and look at that. And that will become familiar. Yeah? Guys, I'm going to leave you with um, one last thing which I heard on a video this morning. And it's awesome. So I'm going to share it with you. And it's written up there. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. How's that? How's that? Right? We've all built this wonderful little comfort zone around ourselves. And we've built it, you know, whether because, because maybe that's what we wanted or someone has built it for us. But it's comfortable. You know, we've, it, every, everything's familiar. Everything's familiar. And yet something is missing. There's something there that you still want out of life. And that's great. That's awesome, in fact. So step out of the comfort zone. Start your life now. But don't go blowing up the onion. Start with something small. Thank you to everyone who tapped in this morning. And if you're watching this as a replay later on in the day, um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been, actually, I know it's been, it has been full of really useful information that you can apply to your own lives. Really simple steps, dare, define, assess, refine and execute. Okay. These are all steps that will allow you to start looking within and bringing forth your true self. Yeah? Not going to be comfortable because you're stepping out of your comfort zone. Is it going to be fun? You're not to start with. Not to start with. But that's purging a lot of crap. And what's at the end of that is absolutely fun. Have a great day, guys. Bye.